The False Promises is a new seasonal kinetic high impact auto rifle rewarded from Umbral Engrams. You can earn a chance at a False Prophecy by taking your Umbral Engram to the Prismatic Recaster in the Drifter's Antechamber in the Tower. There, you'll spend one Umbral Engram and 50 altered elements to turn it into a pyramid focused Umbral Engram. After that, you'll take the Engram over to the Umbral Decoder and decrypt it for a new seasonal weapon. For stats, False Promises comes with a base range of 75, a stability of 25, a handling speed of 42, and a reload speed of 44. It has a base aim assist value of 52, a zoom of 20, and a recoil direction of 86. Being a high impact frame weapon, False Promises is naturally more accurate when you stand still while aiming down sights. In PvP, the False Promises has an optimal time to kill of 0.83 seconds with 5 crits and 1 body shot dealing 36 damage to the head and 22 to the body. Before we look at the perks, let's talk about where high impact autos shine and where they struggle. In PvE, they do perfectly fine, particularly if they come with a damage dealing bonus like Rampage or Kill Clip. This season's artifact comes with anti-barrier rounds for auto rifles, and this pair is great with high impact auto rifles because of their extended range. You'll be able to fire your anti-barrier rounds at barrier champions from a safe distance, which is a refreshing change of pace from Season of the Worthy. In the Crucible, this archetype of auto rifle excels at range and generally performs poorly at closer distances. Any mid to long distance range lane with some cover for you to move in and out of will be where you'll do your best with this weapon. The biggest issue you'll run into in the Crucible will be snipers and pulse rifle users. Even with high caliber rounds on your false promises, you'll still likely get sniped through flinch. Further complicating matters for you are the newly buffed high impact pulse rifles enjoying a more forgiving TTK operating in that same space. Moving on to perks, this auto comes with the standard 9 barrel perk options in column 1, arrowhead break, chambered compensator, corkscrew rifling, extended barrel, fluted barrel, full bore, hammer forged rifling, polygonal or polygonal however you choose to pronounce it, let's not start that war now, rifling, and small bore. For players using controller, I recommend going for either polygonal slash polygonal rifling for the extra 10 stability, or fluted barrel for the plus 5 stability and the plus 15 handling speed. I prefer to have my autos as stable as possible, and both perks help me achieve that. Fluted barrel's boost to handling is a great option for this weapon, no matter your input device, since False Promises is lacking in that department. Mouse and keyboard players can't go wrong with hammer force rifling for the extra 10 range, and again, you should really consider Fluted Barrel for the reasons mentioned before. I'm giving an honorable mention to Corkscrew Rifling for its plus 5 to range, stability, and handling. Barrels to avoid include Arrowhead Break, Extended Break, and Full Bore. It might sound crazy of me to talk you out of Arrowhead Break, but most of its plus 30 recoil direction bonus is wasted due to the weapon's recoil coming in at a base of 86. You can't go past 100 recoil direction, so you'd be throwing away 16 points of this perk right out the gate. The plus 10 hailing speed isn't bad, you just won't be getting as much out of arrowhead break as you normally would. Extended barrel and full bore are both less useful here because high impact autos enjoy a great deal of range naturally, and you're not gaining much here to sacrifice either the 10 handling you lose with extended barrel or the minus 10 stability and minus 5 handling from full bore. For magazine and ammunition perks, false promises can come with two of the following. Extended mag, alloy magazine, appended mag, armor piercing rounds, high caliber rounds, ricochet rounds, flared magwell, and light mag. The perk you'll want most in this column depends on the content you plan on using false promises in the most. Extended mag is fine overall, but comes with a hefty penalty of minus 20 to your reload speed for more ammo in the mag. This might be too much for some players to put up with after the recent rework to weapon reload speed perks with this latest update. Alloy magazine is another solid option overall, giving you a faster reload speed when you empty your magazine. Appended mag is a nice middle ground of extra ammo without the penalty to reload speed that comes with extended mag, but also granting fewer extra bullets in your magazine. Armor piercing rounds is a great choice if you plan on using false promises as a weapon to take down barrier champions and their shields. This perk will give you an extra 5% damage against enemy shields and comes with a cherry on top of an extra 5 range. As I mentioned before, high caliber rounds is a nice option for PvP. The extra flinch you'll deal to your opponent's could save your life, but it's a gamble all around. Again, the extra 5 range on the perk is always a nice bonus. Ricochet Rounds remains a king among ammunition perks for its plus 5 to range and plus 10 to stability. Controller users will really enjoy this perk for the same reasons they've enjoyed it on nearly every other weapon it's on. 
Flared Magwell and Light Mag both improve your reload speed by 15. And Flared Magwell gives a bump of plus five stability versus Light Mags giving you a plus five for range. For column three, we have Underdog, Threat Detector, Overflow, Killing Wind, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Feeding Frenzy, and Subsistence. I'm getting straight to Killing Wind today because it's a new perk that came with this season. Killing Wind's description reads, Final Blows grant increased mobility, weapon range, and handling for a short duration. For numbers, my testing showed Killing Wind grants a 10% buff to your weapon's effective range, a 24% buff to your mobility, and a 63% increase to the weapon's handling speed for nearly 5 seconds. It's important to note that Killing Wind's benefits go away if you swap to a different weapon, although if you do swap, you'll get that quick draw-like effect. This perk combines aspects of moving target, quick draw, snapshot, and rangefinder all into one perk for the cost of simply getting a kill. That's insane. You'll move faster while strafing, aim down sights as if you had snapshot, swap to your other weapons almost as quickly as if you had quick draw, and get an extra 10% range bonus with just one perk. Killing Win is top tier in every way, and you should look for this perk on any weapon that has it available in its perk pool. Moving on, we have Underdog, which gives you outlaw reload speeds when you're critically injured, and that certainly has a place in the Crucible. You'll often end gunfights in the Crucible in the red, and Underdog could mean the difference between being ready for your next gunfight or not. This is a perfectly fine perk that will see a lot of use in your gameplay and challenging content. People write Underdog off as garbage, but it's very underrated, and it's kind of very fitting considering the name. Threat Detector offers amazing benefits in the form of faster reload speed, better stability, and handling speeds, stacking three times based on the number of enemies near you. While this perk is greatly beneficial on close range weapons, such as shotguns and SMGs, it doesn't do much to help a longer range weapon like this auto rifle. Overflow loads extra ammunition into your magazine, whether you pick up special or heavy ammo off the ground. This is more valuable on weapons with smaller magazines like hand cannons, but that doesn't mean it's wasted on false promises. For PvE, this, combined with something like Swashbuckler or Rampage in the fourth column, can be amazingly effective for ad clear and damage on tougher targets. You'll kill the adds, stack up your bonus, and then switch to the tougher target or boss. Dynamic Sway Reduction is also here on this weapon. Now you've probably heard a lot about this perk over the last few weeks ever since adaptive frame auto rifles were buffed in Season of the Worthy. It both boosts stability and eliminates balloon, two significant traits for automatic weapons. This will allow you to more reliably land shots on your targets and improve the weapon's consistency overall. This makes it a solid contender to be one of, if not the best perk in this column. Feeding Frenzy is next, allowing each rapid kill with this weapon to progressively increase its reload speed for a short time, stacking up to 5 times. Feeding Frenzy recently saw a rework with this season's release, requiring 5 kills to achieve its full benefits, as opposed to previously when you only had to get 1 kill. It no longer gives you outlaw reload speeds for killing enemies with body shots. At least not just one body shot, that is. There's been a fair deal of criticism aimed at the reload speed perks being worked, and that's understandable. Players grew accustomed to their benefits, and it'll take time for all of us to readjust to the new normal of reload perks. I'm not saying these reworks are good or bad, just that it'll take time for all of us to adjust. Finally in this column, we have Subsistence. Kills partially reload the magazine from reserves, but reserve capacity is reduced. Subsistence is still a love it or hate it type of perk for most players. Yes, Bungie reduced the capacity penalty a few seasons ago, and you can further counter this deficit with ammo reserve mods. But I feel Subsistence needs something to synergize with in the other columns to really shine. And in this case, that would be something like Rampage or Swashbuckler. For the final perk column, we have a chance for any two of the following. Sympathetic Arsenal, Surrounded, Swashbuckler, Unrelenting, Zen Moment, Eye of the Storm, and Rampage. Again, I'll skip ahead to the new hotness, which is the Unrelenting perk. This perk's description reads that rapidly defeating targets triggers health regeneration. Guardians and powerful combatants count as more than one kill. This perk is a lesser version of the Suros Legacy perk found on the Suros Regime Exotic Auto Rifle, restoring your health after kills. In PvP, it can trigger off just one kill, and in PvE, it can activate after just two kills. Unrelenting will truly shine if you learn to take cover and let it work as you recover between gunfights. You can score a kill, pop back behind cover, recover your health faster than your enemies expect you to, 
and then pop back out to engage them again. Unrelenting is powerful enough to shift the momentum of a match back into your favor, and for that reason, I consider it to be a top tier perk. Sympathetic Arsenal is another new perk for the season. Reloading after scoring a final blow reloads your stowed weapons. Now this perk gives you auto-loading holster on your energy and heavy weapons, allowing you to maximize DPS in difficult content. You'll be able to unload your heavy weapons onto a boss, then swap back to false promises to kill adds, and then reload all of your weapons at the same time to repeat. This is revolutionary because it means you can now look for heavy weapons without auto-loading holster and look for something like full court field prep, or clown cartridge. However, this perk's viability in PvE is limited to content when tougher enemies spawn red bar enemies for you to kill, to reload, and activate the perk. For PvP, this means you can get a kill with false promises and reload your shotgun or other close range weapon in your energy slot and have it ready for any shotgun warriors trying to charge you down. Again, very useful and a top tier perk in this column. Surrounded will give you bonus damage when three or more enemies are near you, but it doesn't play well with when and how you're trying to use this weapon. If enemies are close enough to activate this perk for you, then you're too close to be effective with the weapon. A solid pass for me. Swashbuckler and Rampage are here as well, and I'll review them for this weapon at the same time because they basically do the same thing. They give you extra damage for killing enemies. The difference is that Swashbuckler stacks up to 5 times and can reach its maximum potential after scoring one melee kill, while Rampage stacks up to 3 times and is safer to use in tougher content. This really comes down to personal choice, and you can make a case for either. Zen Moment is here and is a solid perk if your roll of the False Promises comes with it, as causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. This works out to be a 66% bonus of the weapon's overall stability stat, and in this case, isn't really as beneficial as it is on other archetypes of autos. Extra stability is always helpful in automatic weapons such as autos, and there's nothing bad about getting this perk on your false promises. It's just not ideal for me. Lastly, we have Eye of the Storm. This weapon becomes more accurate and boosts handling as your health gets lower. Working in the opposite way that killing wind works, but offering similar benefits, Eye of the Storm is a strong choice for controller users and console players in PvP. Your weapon's accuracy and aim assist will improve noticeably when you arguably need them the most as your health depletes in a gunfight. I would be extremely interested in a combo of this perk and killing wind on a weapon, as I feel that weapon would be unbelievably consistent and invaluable in the Crucible. And that's all for today's video. Uh, please be sure to leave a comment below telling me what you think about the False Promises Auto Rifle and its potential in PvP and PvE. Uh, do you have a role of this weapon that you're looking for? Be sure to let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.